The Chinese Chengdu J-20 is the first known non-American stealth combat aircraft to enter service. We speculate on the nature and origins of this impressive aircraft. Jim Smith had significant technical roles in the development of the UK's leading military aviation programmes. From the Azram missile to Nimrod to the Joint Strike Fighter, which led to the F-35 and the Eurofighter Typhoon. We asked his opinion on what we can learn from looking at China's next superfighter, the Chengdu J-20. The following words are his. The J-20 and the Su-57 are generally described as F-22 Raptor-class aircraft. In many ways this is true, but I think the J-20 is particularly interesting because of its rather different configuration. The J-20 has a can of delta rather than the essentially tail delta of both the Raptor and the Su-57. Unlike Typhoon, the Canard is not closely coupled to the wing. What might be the trade-offs here? I think the main benefit to be gained from this arrangement is the carriage of significantly more fuel, coupled with the scope for use of a longer weapons bay. The overall outcome could be a remarkable multi-role aircraft, with a particular strike role carrying area denial weapons. These might include, but are unlikely to be limited to, anti-ship missiles. The additional fuel could confer either additional range or long combat persistence, and this suggests that if armed with a long-range air-to-air missile, a role as an anti-AWACS or anti-tanker system. What of the compromises? I would suggest less energy manoeuvrability, as the configuration is likely to have somewhat higher transonic drag. In addition, signature, other than head-on, looks likely to be a bit greater. Head-on signature could be comparable to competing systems, if appropriate engine installation and airframe treatments are used. The canard, I am assuming, will be held at low deflection for supersonic flight, especially if Su-35-like thrust vectoring is available to trim the aircraft. It's not clear from open source literature if this is the case, but if I were a PLA customer, I would be looking for it. Those are Jim's words, but I'd like to add some thoughts of my own. Some have speculated that the J-20 design may have been based on the Russian MiG project 144 tactical fighter design of the 1990s. MiG had been working on new generation fighters since the 1980s, and MiG's 144 technology testbed flew in support of this effort, taking its first flight in 2000. The theory goes that China bought research data and possibly worked with MiG to create the J-20. Though it is true that several Chinese aircraft, notably the Kamov designed KAIC Z-10 attack helicopter, were Russian designs, never ordered by their parent state, the idea that MiG helped with the J-20 does raise some big questions. The first is, where did the money go? If MiG did provide vital work for a massively important program, they must have negotiated a very poor deal. MiG has been in a perilous state for years. In the 1990s and the chaotic early days of the Russian Federation, it fell out of favour. Despite its impressive history, it was at the mercy of officials friendly to the rival Suhoi Design Bureau. The company limped on in the 1990s and early 2000s and certainly didn't seem buoyed by mysterious funds. The MiG-144 was killed for good in 2000, so presumably the Chinese relationship would have happened around this time. It could have occurred before, as anything was possible in Russia in the 1990s, but selling high-tech secrets while trying to pitch the same projects to your own government seems a risky strategy. We also have the question of when this collaboration could have happened. According to Western sources, development of the J-20 began in the late 1990s, and it was officially announced by the Chinese in 2002. Things were still pretty terrible for MiG at this time. Later still, MiG um, were caught trying to palm off old, or inferior quality, MiG-29s as new aircraft to the Algerian Air Force. The infuriated Algerians returned the initial 15 aircraft. This move severely damaged MiG's reputation. Would a company with lucrative secret deals have bothered with such dangerous chutzpah? There's also the question of what the design similarities are. Though superficially similar, the two designs have a great deal of difference. They do indeed have a similar tailplane configuration and are both Canard Deltas, 
However, we then start running out of physical similarities. Now at this point, it should be noted that the Russian aircraft was a test bed, and the eventual aircraft may have been different in key areas, though MiG has never confirmed this is the case. So let's look at the differences. An underslung box in-deck arrangement of the MiG. The Canard 4 planes also seem to have a different relationship to the wing. The MiG's 4 planes are far closer to the main leading edge of the wing, the J-20's metre leading edge root extension. The MiG's 4 planes are mounted higher than the wing, whereas the J-20's start at the same height as the wing and at a pronounced dihedral angle. Not everything can be judged from the outline of an aircraft, and it is possible that much in the way of internal structure or materials was directly informed by the Russian aircraft. If this was the case, then much Lockheed Martin DNA was also spliced into the program. The Lockheed Martin stealth solution could have been arrived at completely independently, but this seems unlikely. A look at the other entrance to the American ATF contest reveal that there is more than one way to skin a cat. If American allegations of Chinese espionage relating to the F-35 are grounded, the similarities to the US fifth generation fighter may be more than skin deep. In conclusion, the evidence is far from damning and appears to lead back to the skunk works as much as it does to Moscow.